Hello, it's Matt from King Unique, back for Sonic Academy with the Behringer Neutron. So what we're going to do is look at each section, uh, the oscillators, the filter, etc., LFO, and see what they do individually. Then we'll see how they're wired together in the synth normalized setting. That's the one where everything is running without any patch cables. And then we're going to see how you can repatch these things. That will pretty much take us through the whole machine. As I say, there's a bit of software to look at at the end, but that will give us a, an overview of what's going on here. So first of all, the oscillators. Okay, there are two oscillators, OSC1 and OSC2. Now they're both based on a, an old synth chip called the, uh, the CEM3340, and you can see here it says 3340-3340 VCO. That's just a bit of a synth history. Behringer have cloned this, uh, this old VCO on a chip. It's used in tons of things. Um, Roland Oberheim, all kinds of people used to use this chip, so it's, uh, it's got a nice uh, sort of heritage and it's obviously a familiar sound. For the old vintage analog gear. So we'll start at the top of the oscillator section which is pretty much here. We'll start at the top and we'll work our way down. First we have OSC mix. Now this is simply a balance between the two oscillators. So if I push it all the way to the left we hear just OSC1, push it to the right we hear just OSC2. In the middle we hear a balance, let's hear that now. Okay just hearing OSC2, just hearing OSC1. I'll set them to different sounds so you can hear how clear that is a little more obviously. Okay, and for now I will just leave us on OSC1 and we're just going to work our way down this half because it's, as you can see, it's pretty much a mirror until we get to the, uh, the sync and paraphonic controls. So, first thing is the large tune control. Okay, now when I move this, we get an octave occasionally, slightly more, occasionally slightly less if the, um, the oscillator is drifting at all, but roughly a transposed octave above and below at its full extent. Now we can also move that up in octaves in single steps here with the range control. So if I press range again, it'll go from the 16 foot setting up to the 8 foot setting. Okay, so we jump an octave. If I press it again, we go into a special setting that I'll come to in a second, and after that, we loop back round to 32, which is an octave down from where we started. Okay, so it's 32, 16, 8. These numbers refer to old organ pipes. This is why we have this weird terminology on synthesizers. It's how many feet long the pipe was to make a different pitch. So an 8-foot long pipe was two octaves higher than a 32-foot pipe. So this is where we have this from, pretty much essentially it's just octaves, okay? So, as well as the low, mid, and high octaves, we have this final one. If I press again, we go into all three LEDs are lit up. At that point, this oscillator behaves more like a, a VCO on a modular synth, where simply you can tune across ten whole octaves when I turn this tune knob. So instead of going one octave left to right, you'll hear now, way down out into subsonics. Okay, so you've got the range there to go across all 10 octaves, and you've also got these very sort of simple octave locked chromatic options. So when range is set to all three LEDs, this swoops through 10 octaves. When range is set to any of these, it has a one octave range. Okay, moving down, we have shape. Now this is the choice of waveform that the oscillator is producing. So far we've been using a sine wave, a nice dull, warm sound. If I move shape, you'll see that instead of switching up to the next waveform, we actually blend through. You can watch the LEDs kind of fade out and fade in. There you go. Going into triangle. Going into sawtooth. Into square pulse. And lastly, into a more tonally complex waveform that Behringer have put on board. So that behavior, that sort of blending lets you create numerous different waveforms, not just pick from these five. You can actually sort of hit midpoints and work from there. A nice sort of triangle uh, sawtooth there. And when just one LED is lit, you're pretty much hearing just that one waveform. When either side is lit up as well, you're getting that blend.
Now, if you don't want to have that blending option, if you want to just step clearly from one waveform to another, if you hold the range key here, hold the range button, sorry, down, a couple of seconds, you'll see this paraphonic button is now glowing, like ebbing up and down, yeah? And you see how it's kind of fading in and fading out? That is to kind of indicate the idea that these are fading in and out between them. If I now hold it properly down, it's flashing. And that means that if I now want to come out of this mode, these will now step between. So if I turn that range button off, what we've done now is changed how this shape control behaves. So now it's stepped. Let's turn that back. You simply hold range down again a couple of seconds. Paraphonic lights up. Blinking on and off with the stepped. Press it. There it is fading in and out. Hold range again. And I've got the fade between. It's a little bit fiddly techy stuff. You might not want to use it, but there are occasions where you want that stepped sound rather than this kind of smoothly cross-fading tonal control. And that's how you do it. Lastly at the bottom we've got oscillator width. Now this only works in conjunction with the square wave and the complex tonal waveform. If I use it down here on a triangle or sawtooth or sine, nothing at all. So if I take it up to those waveforms you'll hear... So this pulse width is controlling, as it suggests, the width of this square pulse or these tonally complex wave pulses here. So that is pretty much the octave tune, the shape and the width straight down here. Okay? And you've got the same on oscillator 2 as well. We've balanced between them with the OSC mix. So all that's left is OSC sync and paraphonic. So let's get a, a mix between the two. As you can hear, they're not really happily in tune there. These are very sensitive, these tune controls, and so you might find you have to just occasionally just twitch things back into the, uh, the same pitch. Okay. Let's put oscillator one on a slightly softer shape. There we go. Okay, so OSC sync is a sort of complicated idea to explain, but very easy to hear. What it means is each time that the wave sweeps round on this oscillator, this oscillator's wave is reset. Now that doesn't make much difference and it doesn't make much sense until you sort of hear the effect. So I'll switch it on. But press OSC sync. While they're on the same octave, not a lot's going to happen because resetting the waveform when it's running at much the same frequency has very small effect. But if it's on a different octave, particularly if it's above, if I now go out of key, So oscillator 2 is now locked to the same pitch as oscillator 1, but its tone changes as you take that tune away from being perfectly in uh, key with each other. And if I drop oscillator 1 down to the octave below, it becomes even more pronounced. If I turn oscillator 2 to being the full 10 octaves, you'll hear the change as it goes much higher. Okay, so that's OSC sync. And lastly, we've got paraphonic. Now, paraphonic is halfway between monophonic and polyphonic, as the name suggests, it's kind of paraphonic. It's halfway to being a polyphonic synth. So why isn't it a polyphonic synth? Well, let's put it on and I'll show you. So to make it easy to hear, we'll have one of these on um, sine and one on a sawtooth. So as I play two notes, you'll hear that the neutrons, instead of playing these two layered, it will actually play them one to each of the notes I'm playing. So if I play just a single note, even on paraphonic mode, they'll be layered. But if I play a chord,
So you can hear when I play two notes, it assigns one oscillator to one of the keys, one to the other, but the two are still sharing the same envelopes, the same filter, etc. And that's what makes it paraphonic. On a fully polyphonic synth, each would have its own uh, ADSR for amplitude, for volume. Each would have its own filter. So they would behave as separate synth voices. But in paraphonic, it's not quite as fully flexible. So that's the oscillator section. We'll look at the filter now. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.